Hey, welcome to Bridges Live. This is Dr. Paul Dyer, and I have a, another great guest, and I love having my guests, especially on Bridges Live. Of course, you can always catch me on drpaulholisticscience.com. You can catch all my podcasts there, or you can always catch it on iHeart and iTunes Radio. Um, I like doing the videos with um, certain people that can, because it's great, because then people get to see us as we get to, don't to see you, but we get to see each other. It's a great conversation. So, yeah. Eric, Welcome to Bridges Live. Thank you for coming on with me. Thank you, Dr. Paul. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm absolutely blessed to be uh, sitting with you and your uh, listeners and followers today. So give us a little bit of backdrop of what you do, and then we can go right into there because it, we want to keep this. It's, it, you, but there's, a lot, there's always a lot to talk about, but for me, I think it's communication and then it's understanding. So let's yes. give us a little backdrop. Okay, so... Um, my name is Eric Bratton. I am founder and president at Metasource Staffing and Recruiting. We are a boutique physician recruiting firm, and we are kind of the first of um, this kind of physician recruiting firm with a focus on diversity recruiting. Um, diversity is something very, very important in, in the healthcare sector right now. So we kind of found our niche in a space that uh, is just becoming really popular and open now and we're excited to be in that space so you know when you it's amazing that many of us and many of the black community don't really seek out to own their own business you think they're afraid of it um i i don't know how i don't i don't necessarily think they're too afraid of it i think it's because you hear a lot of talk all the time you know i want to start this business and i hear all of these great and fantastic ideas by a lot of uh, brothers and sisters that I do know that want to get into business and they ask me to mentor them and how did I do this, how did I do that? So the, uh, the drive is there. I think that somewhere along the line they feel as though the opportunities to get there are, are, are not there or someone's holding them back from something. But I'm here to let them know. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm living proof that it can certainly happen for you. I'm going to tell you what I believe is a huge factor, and that's having the right partner in your life. Yes. Yes. I, I don't know. You can do a lot of things on your own, and, and, and God graces people have done things because of the drive, like you said, on their own. I think it's great. But when you have a support system we'll look at yes. it that way when you yes. have a, that support system and it could be any human being sure it, it could probably be a puppy too but sure. i think you need a human being to have that support system sure. that just says you know what about this yeah and you know it's interesting you say that uh dr paul because my support my my support system certainly came from my wife and I got to give her all due credit because I probably would not have been doing Metasource. I would have still been on the corporate wheel if, if not for her. Okay. Okay. In 2000, I, <laughs> and I'm going to give her all due respect. So let me, it's, so let me frame that. Um, I, after graduate school, I took a job with a very large pharmaceutical company. Um, promoted up the ranks, did some wonderful things with them, learned so, so much with regards to healthcare and, and found my kind of niche in uh, my career and my personal development. I was laid off in 2013 and, or they call it a corporate restructuring. I call it laid off still. <laughs> so um, I, yeah, so uh, I'll never forget, I was getting ready to go back to um, another pharma company. I was just signed. I was getting ready to sign another contract, and I had made so many wonderful relationships and friendships, personal friendships I have up to today with a lot of doctors and hospital CEOs and things like that throughout mm -hmm. the country. <laughs> and um, they would be speaking to me and say, you know, Eric, do you know anybody that's hiring? Or do you know or, or do you know a nurse? Or do you know a doctor that's looking for an opportunity? And of course, in pharma, you know everyone right. in healthcare. Right. So I must, have, I must have done it maybe 30 good times before I ever thought about um, venturing out onto my own because I've always had 
a really entrepreneurial spirit. Right. And one night my wife and I were laying in a bed and I was going, well, I got to start all over a new company and, you know, the, the whole diversity thing and getting my feet planted and back on in, in the game. And she said, why don't you do this? Why, why don't you do this? And I was like, wow, you know, really? And she was like, yeah, you know, and, and she was the one that was really actually pushing me because sometimes in business and being an entrepreneur, you could be your worst enemy. You really can. And on, you can really, on both accounts, you can either sink yourself. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, you can sink yourself. But you know what? That's okay, because sinking yourself is good. I'm a voracious reader, and I can tell you this. Um, if you look at the billionaires of the world today or the very wealthy people today, ask them how many businesses have failed yep. that they have started and business ventures yep. have failed. Yep. Failure is a process towards success. So where we yeah, fall off. Yeah, hold mm -hmm. on. There's a caveat to that. Yes. If you're learning from it. Yes. Yes. Because we, we, we have football players who or athletes. Yes. Knuckleheads. They are failing miserably. Yes. And yes. I don't, I'm like, I'm done giving them a sh chance. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, and, I'm, right. So, and then yeah. you look at some, and then you look at some that are doing so amazingly well. I mean, look at the brother Shaq, yeah. right? And the business that this brother's doing. Even in terms of, if, if you translate that into the music industry, the brother Jay-Z, the brother Nas, the brother 50 Cent, these guys that have embraced this business model, yeah. right? And they've stepped out of that, their box of what they're doing and have become amazing business people. But here's, Here's what I do know about Shaq. When he was 19, he had met Magic Johnson. Yes. And Magic had said they had this thing together. And Magic says, so what business are you going to start? And, 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 I, and I heard this conversation done by Shaquille O'Neal because now he's, he's Shaquille O'Neal. He's way past Shaq. Yes, right. <laughs> he's Shaquille. He's, he's well, you know Shaq. Shaquille. He's still Shaq to me because, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's still Shaq to me, which, but okay, Shaquille. Which is funny because Charles Barkley will always be the round mound to me. The round mound. That's right. <laughs> Sir or Sir Charles. Sir Either Charles. Right. But, 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 but Magic had talked to him. And yes. so there's that mentor piece. There's mm -hmm. that support piece that Litton said, what are you talking about? What is that? And so he went back, he looked at it, and he was watching, and he watched some of those people who had money later in life. And so right. he wanted to do that. Yes. And I think that's what it is. It, I, I know that's having a self-business was never my thing. I just know being in the military, I realized, Working for other people doesn't fit well when they don't care about you. Yes, yes. They have to, they have to care about, and that's why I do emotional education, because people sure. don't know how they're talking to these people, and mm. they're so condescending. They, Absolutely. And, and so with your Metasource, when you're doing inclusion and diversity, that's got to be an education piece for you or corporate to understand like if you hire these people that don't look like you there's a way to talk to them to include them include Absolutely. Them. so is is that what you have to do most of the time well that's interesting you say that so a uh, couple different uh, caveats to that and in terms of the mentorship I, I'll speak on that a little bit later but diversity equity and inclusion there is no degree for it so let's just get that there, there's no degree, there's no, uh, you know, you, can, you can't walk across stage and get a diploma for it or anything like that. So diversity and inclusion is really believing that um, a more diverse workforce is beneficial not only to the community, to the patients, to the efficacy of those patients, because that's what we're here for, you know, just flat out the, improving our patients' lives in, in right. their sicknesses. So study after studies after studies have shown that folks that, um, patients that are seeing 
uh, physicians that look like them or can relate to them or maybe from the same community as them or the same background as them, the efficacy of those patients are better. The outcomes are, are better for those patients. Uh, the community um, is uh, rallied together stronger around these hospitals that are based necess that are based in uh, communities that um, are uh, let's ha serve a certain demographic. Uh, now, now yes. let me ask you this, and I, and I, I, it's we'll, we'll, you're talking about a point, but I, has there ever been a black hospital? To my knowledge, there has not ever been a black hospital, but there's plenty of them in black communities. <laughs> but there's very many of them in black communities. Now, do I know if there's a black hospital? Absolutely not. I, I, I'm, I cannot tell you uh, that there has. I personally have not heard of one, but I can tell you this. Things have changed so rapidly um, in healthcare that I believe a lot, I, I know that a lot of hospitals and a lot of these larger hospital systems are now try, starting to understand how important diversity and inclusion in their hospital is. So let me frame this for uh, the viewer and listeners out there. When I say uh, diversity, I don't mean um, sort of this, you walk into the hospital and you say, oh, okay, here's a black doctor, or oh, here's a LGBTQ person, or oh, here's this person, or here's an Asian, or this or that. Because uh, diversity, diversity is more than just crossing T's and dotting I's. Right. Diversity and inclusion is where you know that you have a very effective diversity program because yeah. it, it's, it's, it's easy it's to say, different. It's, it's a huge difference. It's easy to say, okay, I'm going to hire, okay, we have these many Blacks, we have these many LGBTQ. Yeah, Indians, but until, whatever. Yes, but until those people are able to have or have a pathway to become decision makers within that organization, that's where the inclusion comes into play. Having those same people have a seat at the table to be able to make decisions and, 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 and bring a more broader spectrum to the diversity and inclusion within that organization. That's the, an effective diversity, equity, and inclusion program at any facility or any organization that you work with. And so education is key uh, to uh, what I do. Um, do. Do you have to educate both ways, do you think? Well, yes, and, and I'm glad you said that because it is educating both ways. On the corporate spectrum, it has to be where everyone at the top of the rung, and I mean the top of the food chain in the organization, <clears throat> are on board and they believe in diversity, equity, inclusion. If they do not believe in that, then the, it's not going to be an effective program. Then you're just crossing T's and dotting I's. Now, on the opposite side of that, in educating the candidates that we, um, yeah, right. that we put forth with, with them, a lot of times, the opportunities that we do have, it's sort of a hidden job market, right? What do you so, mean? Well, I mean in the sense of this. We come across so many outstanding organizations with, outstanding positions and um, outstanding practices and compensation and things like that. Okay. And those opportunities aren't always promoted to the, uh, organ to the schools, the medical schools and things like that, that may um, have that class of uh, physician the Morehouses of the world and, and those types of schools where we can pull from this candidate base this huge, of minorities. This huge source, right. Correct, correct. So th these opportunities aren't always promoted. And I'm not saying it's a conspiracy. I'm just saying that uh, we, our job is to get that information out to them and let them know, hey, look, there's a lot of outstanding, fantastic opportunities for you out here throughout the country. And it's our job to uh, uh, convey those opportunities to uh, our candidates. So this is an amazing thing. Now, because 
are you, and you're the only one's been doing this that you have come across um that i have come across yes now it was a difficult conversation to have doc when um when we first started out in 2013 because uh, again diversity equity inclusion is something that's always been there but now because the faces of our community are changing and the demographics of our communities are changing um uh, it's become kind of a um it's become kind of a, a thing now the thing diversity and inclusion and 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 really i hope it's it's sticking it's staying people are understanding and the, the hospitals are getting it i was just talking to um carol um copeland thomas yes on, on one of my podcasts on, on bridges live just recently and you can and people can catch that and listen to that and because she does diversity and inclusion too on a corporate level yes now and she's been doing this for a while and she says it is you know the one of the things i noticed when she was talking about is that it's such an education piece for her to say this is such beneficial for your company yes you to understand what you never understood sure and now you're 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 actually saying hey i actually have a a candidate that will suit you well and and what you're saying also is that if they're not fully on board which is some hospitals most hospitals have a board yes and i don't know if all those people in the room man that that must be a tough pill for them to swallow you know what um and that and that's okay it can be a tough pill to swallow to have an extra sip of water <laughs> it'll go down better okay because the fact of the matter is because they're choking on it right they're now. they're choking on it they're and choking okay. on it and i don't want to and i don't want to make I, I i don't want to make anyone feel like that and, and do i encounter um organizations that aren't really there yet yes i have yes i have i have some very very rural candidates or or, or organizations that we work with that necessarily that, that actually serve a certain um uh demographic where um an african-american wouldn't fit in or a muslim doctor wouldn't fit in there it just doesn't fit in the community and it doesn't fit in the community and you know what i don't want that to and i tell them i don't want that to scare anyone away because that's just the fact of life right that's just what it is that's not anything um you know discriminatory okay um you want the, a doctor that's going to serve your patients best and serve them well <laughs> And you know what's funny is that the people who are the minorities, and we know that the um, the, the ratio is changing, yeah. but we it's still, it doesn't matter how many people there are, it's still a minority. Mm -hmm. Minorities have always known that they're not always welcome. So I know for myself, I've always felt I had to work extra hard not to be accepted, but mm -hmm. to be qualified. To be qualified, sure. And I think we've all experienced that. I mean, I sometimes sit back and 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 I'm I'm always and Dr. Paul, I'm always very transparent in how I do things, whether personally or professionally. And I can tell you that I sit back sometimes and I say, "Wow, you know, I am running in some circles that, you know, are you know, I don't see very many people that look like me in these circles." I I, I, I I've been I've been on a boat or a ship or a yacht, and I'm I'm telling you, I was the only brother on it. <laughs> correct. Correct. <laughs> absolutely 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 and and you know and i'm so happy to be in that space right because right. diversity and inclusion is something that um as an african-american man operating in this kind of corporate bubble that you have to embrace mm. right this is no snowflake uh kind of um uh you know endeavor you know this is something that i am very very passionate about because it makes me happy to come to my clients and say hey listen i have an absolutely fantastic candidate and after looking at the demographics of the communities that you serve this is the data and this is the outcomes and this is where this can go for you and really um it's beneficial to everyone and especially them their bottom their bottom financial line as well I, first, I want to let everybody know you listen to Bridges Live with Dr. Paul. We're talking to Mr. Eric Bratton of Metasource. He's the CEO and owner of Metasource, and it helps people, it works with diversity and inclusion on a healthcare system. Now, here's the tough question of 
we know that, and I, I believe that blacks do well with black owned businesses. Yes. I believe that because our circulating of dollar, we can get it. That's I've had that in other shows. It's, it's running out and that's why we're, we're, we are economically poor. Yes. Have you looked at that? When we talk about having our own businesses, mm -hmm. grocery stores, okay. Clothing stores, rock on restaurants, of course. Mm -hmm. Is this something that seems almost mountaintop-ish of having own hospital? Not at all. Okay. I, not, not at all. I mean, um, I think where we've been to where we are today, yeah. we have a lot further to go but we know we can get there. That's, okay. that's the key. Okay. Knowing that we can get there. I do a lot of, I do a lot of um, mentoring young folks here. Right. And I you love to, talking to them. You go to a lot of schools. Yes. On I your do. own time. Educate. I, I, I do. I have an affinity for young folks um, because I, I am a black man, child from Buffalo, New York, uh, from the city of Buffalo. And um, I love to be able, I know how it is to be in the inner city and no one tell you, you can do this. You know, you, I fortunate enough to have parents that, you know, um, uh, there was no out after high school, you're going to college period. Right. But, but in the same, in the same regard, I, I saw it from the other side as well. I, I tell people all the time, I am diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. Um, I have seen it from both ends, both ends of the spectrum. So um, mentoring these young folks and letting them know that, listen, this is very attainable. This is doable. Okay. You just have to have the drive and the motivation and someone that they're mentoring you and letting you know that you can succeed at this. Now, here's a quick story for you with regards to the mentoring thing. Even as a grown man, when I started this business uh, of recruiting, I am big on mentors. I contacted, I cold called a company in California that I had never met these people ever before. I just went on LinkedIn and I did some research and I said, these people are doing the same thing that I'm doing and they seem to be doing it successfully. Right. I contacted him. And I said, I am trying to do this here. I picked you because you're on the West Coast. I'm all the way on the East Coast, so there's no uh, conflict of interest. Yeah. Will you please mentor me and take me under your wing? If I have questions, if I can do this, if I, it, can you answer them for me? And after he was first taken back by it and agreed, um, he kind of uh, mentored me along and, 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 and taught me the ropes. That's and, uh, yes, absolutely. And I'm you, good, very good. Mentors. Yes, we, absolutely. We, this world is not done by ourselves, absolutely. which goes back to our original statement that having that support system. Yes. And if you don't think you have a support system like you did, you went out and like, I'm going to go get one. Now, yes, absolutely. We know, we know your wife is the, you know, the, the support system, but if she didn't kick this off, you wouldn't have sought that out. I wouldn't have sought that out. And, you know, it's interesting. I tell everyone now I... It's interesting, people call me to mentor them, uh, friends or people that have been referred to me, and, and I'm more than happy to do it because, um, <clears throat> and I tell them, I say, and the first thing I ask, the very first thing I ask, mm -hmm. why do you wanna do that? Do this, because it is much easier to punch a clock at seven and punch out at five <laughs> than it is to run your, and run your own company, your own business. And that's just the, 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 the fact. That's just, you're and, just you're and, independently and, broke all the time. You're independently broke all the time. And, you know, you know, hopefully you like ramen noodles and things <laughs> like that, you know, but, <laughs> but, you know, it, it's a journey and, and the journey is uh, yours to define. In right. other words, uh, if you're getting in this to, with a get rich, I'm going to make this overnight scheme. You know, it's, it doesn't work like that. You have to put the time in and you have to show passion and dedication to what you do and in the product that you plan on putting out there uh, to the world. 
you know, um, how do people get a hold of you for Metasource if they're looking to understand? And because you reached out to all the states of including them and talk. So it's not like you're just in a particular state. You're all across the country. Oh, yeah. We, we've lectured in um, Florida, which we're based out of Florida now, uh, New York, Texas, California. So we're trying to really... Uh, bring uh, light to what we're doing here at Metasource and diversity, equity, inclusion, and the benefits of, of, a, of a diverse workforce. You can contact us at uh, our website is www.metasource, M E D I S O U R C E, staffing.net.net. Uh, we are in the uh, process now of kind of revamping our website, which should be up and running uh, very shortly. We have our IT guys working on that now. Um, you can always reach out to me via email at ebratton, my first initial last name, ebratton at medisourcestaffing.net, and I'd be happy to discuss uh, with you. Is there a way we can help? Because you having your business, you're doing your thing. Is there a support staff you still need to help you? Do you need different recruiters? Would that help you in different states so you can train a recruiter? So then you can, is, is that something you're also looking to do? Yeah, and, and you know, it's interesting you say that because um, we, I have my partner, his name's uh, Clinton Fields. Uh, his brother. Hey, he mentioned you. He didn't forget you, Clinton. You thought yeah, he I didn't forget you. you. <laughs> I told him to. Yeah, I have a, I have a very good, and, and Clinton's kind of my, uh, he's the, the VP of our company, and him and I have been touring all over, uh, trying to get the word out as in diversity and inclusion. Really, the business model that I created, and I think it works very, very well in a 1099 business model in terms of recruiters, because, and, and I'll tell you why, uh, because this is a relationship building yeah. um, industry, right? Well, all so, of it, all, 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 all what we do is relationship. It all relationship. And we can be, we can be huge. I mean, we really can be very, very big. I think, you know, we probably have about um, $3.5 million of, uh, you know, work on the table and contracts right now. But um, there's more. There's more, but I like to remain small. I say we're a boutique firm because it gives us the opportunity to build those relationships. Yeah. And, and, and that's really what I like. I'm still a pharma rep at heart. So I still like to knock on doors and, and make phone calls, 60 phone calls a day and, you know, and visit and travel. So I'm still in the trenches, man. So anybody out there that is looking to uh, possibly uh, get into something like this or join us in, 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 in the movement that we're establishing, by all means, please reach out to me because I would love to share uh, our journey and, and uh, see if Metasource is a good fit for you. Now, when it comes to healthcare, and healthcare is a huge issue in the United States, it will always be an issue because we have the sickest country in the world. Yes. Right? We also call it a sick system. Yes. Do you see the broken pieces and do you put those broken pieces in a box and say, do you have ideas of fixing the, that broken healthcare system? You have ideas, don't you? I know you do. <laughs> I know I, you do. I, I do have ideas. And I will tell you that our healthcare system is very, very broken. And <clears throat> a larger problem outside of access to healthcare insurance is Ooh. the shortage of physicians. That's there is a shortage of physicians in the country, and that is something that is uh, is very troubling to me in this industry, and also as a husband, as a parent, uh, because nowadays you may notice if you go call your doctor now on the phone, you get sick, you may see your nurse practitioner, you may not see a doctor. Right. Uh, right. You may see a mid-level uh, because there is a shortage of family practice, gastroenterology, urology. There's definitely a shortage. So that's why I try to get out to the young folks early and let them know that we need you. We, we need you to get into healthcare. This is the largest, most rapidly growing field in the United States of America right now. And it's in, in the possibilities are limitless. 
in terms and of you, 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 you know there's some of these kids who are from fourth grade on up who says i would i could never think about being a doctor and i hope they hear this and i'm, I'm talking to you kids specifically yes girls boys i'm talking you have an opportunity are you listening to eric eric is talking to you yes. saying you have an opportunity take it yes this is here yes. you know so because the key for us in our communities is to break the cycle yes and that's really the key for us to break the cycle and kids out there it takes one it only takes you to change generations of your family mm -hmm. that's all it takes and through through your hard work and dedication you could change the generation of your your kids kids family so i put the onus on them what do you want to do in your life what do you want to be because this 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 industry is here for you it's there you just have to walk through the door and if i can help in any way then i know i've done my part man that's a godsend man we we, we got to pull our people together we got to pull ourselves together we got to pull this country together we got to pull this globe together yes. because we're rapidly burning we have africa's burning brazil is burning Literally, california california they're on fire right yes and we're, so stop looking at the surmountable things and start looking at the things we can change and the one thing we can change like eric had mentioned is that there's an education component there's an action component and there is a mentor component correct and all three are right here where you can contact somebody for all three correct all three so let's pull together thank you so much eric ranton for thank you for having me doctor oh, it was a pleasure oh man it's been a blessing i know that we got this you know what i'm saying like you know we got, I don't, this. We we got, got this. this we got we got this for sure we got this we just we'll keep driving the message and and let me leave you off on this as well um there's a lot of white noise yes. going on in the world right now literally. literally literally there's a lot of white noise going on in the world right now and instead of looking at that as a um setback yeah let's capitalize on that let's because move. the opportunities are there they're there for us and we have the opportunity to change some things so i appreciate the time today that's been god bless man thank you so much um eric um for coming on bridges live with me and we'll have you back Anytime. on again. So Anytime. remember, you, you can always catch a podcast on iHeart and iTunes Radio. You can also catch the video download on my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, contact me on um, drpaulholisticscience.com. I wish you all blessings and God bless. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, Thank you. you know, that's, that's great. I, I, I love it. I'll, when everything gets fixed up, I know this relationship will continue to be strong. And I think that's, that's important to me let alone helping other people i think it's help is help but this is important to me so thank you so much yes sir god bless have a okay. good day doc have a good night thank you bye-bye